patient and are still being with us uh, during uh, this wait, this long wait. Um, in the few minutes, we are going to get started and uh, I would like to offload that which I believe will be in the interest of the nation. As you are aware, that I do not deal with any subject that restricts itself to my personal um, uh, desires or to the desires of an, a particular individual or individuals, but in the, in the context of what is good for the nation. I've always been like this ever since I was a young man of 17 years old. God gave me the vision for Zambia shall be saved. Zambia has been framed in front of me throughout all these years. My passion is to see a better Zambia, a Zambia that is in charge of its own destiny, a Zambia that provides a future for our children and our grandchildren that later in the years of life, they'll be able to look back and say, well, Nevis Pumba was my grandfather. And uh, this is what uh, he did, and these are some of the steps he took. Uh, the generation of my grandfather did A, B, C, D. And I think this is, to me, extremely important that even if we are going through problems now as a generation in trying to resolve them, our children and our grandchildren shall raise their hands in praise that we did the right thing in laying the foundation for them. So the subjects I discuss, some of them seem controversial, and a lot of people would like to, even in Sahut, before hearing what I have to say. Um, and yet that is the role that God has given to some of us. Uh, as a voice, uh, either in the opposition or in government, whichever place we find ourselves in at any given time, our responsibility is to offer our little contribution in framing a better Zambia for us. Anything that is done for selfish reasons, I don't want to be a part of it. Something that is done just to make Nevis Mumba's name look good for an election, I will not be part of it. But something that is going to make Zambia a great nation, a nation that we can be proud of for many years to come, and a nation that our children and grandchildren and their children shall be proud of. That is the reason I leave. That is why I cry Zambia shall be saved. Not for me, but for future generations and those whose future is embedded in the success of our nation. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father tonight, we pray for our country Zambia. We pray that Lord may you give us wisdom in the manner in which we handle the affairs of this country. Give us clarity of speech and honesty in the manner in which we discuss issues that affect the future of our country. Father, may we put politics aside and put righteousness, morality, and the fear of God ahead of us. For the future of this country is only secure in your hands, not just in politics, but in your hands. Raise amongst us leaders whose passion will be for the land and not for our pockets, but for the land. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to start. I know that some of the people are going to join us along the way and want to thank all of you for coming. And uh, I am going to discuss a critical subject today. And I think that I'm responding to the ongoing debate in the nation. Uh, tomorrow, God willing, we shall speak about another issue which is trending in the nation and concerning a lot of Zambians, and that is the proposed increment in um, uh, electricity tariffs and all that which goes in the sector of energy and how that will impact on tomorrow. And I, I bring a very short message about that tomorrow, but it will be pointed, and I hope that all of us can see the need to do this right for our country. But for tonight and today, I want to discuss the question that many people do not want to talk about. It is the presidential immunity. Should it be removed or should it not be removed? And to localize this, of course, it's a global concept and also it's a national concept, a continental concept. Uh, but I would like to localize it to our own situation of Zambia. And in this case, we are going to look at President Edgar Chagualungu's immunity. What should we do in the debate? What are the implications of either stand on the matter? And I do qualify to deal with this subject 
because I've been a part or rather present at all the sea, at all the points where Zambia had to make this critical decision. And I think that I am able to advise or offer counsel, not that it should be taken, but I think that it's important it's considered. Because I've seen the hype that is around certain decisions in the nation, how at that moment it's the most exciting thing to do. Uh, but five months, six months later, two years later, people start to regret. And I want to speak ahead of time so that I can be um, clear that if we go this path, this is what we shall get. And there is history to support that. But to start this debate, I would like to just read a few things and then I'll comment on them. The benefit of removing or not removing the presidential immunity lies in the understanding or in understanding the originating purpose of presidential immunity. We must understand its literal meaning. What is presidential immunity? And we must go further. How such an action will impact on the future unity and security of the nation and whether the decision to not remove the immunity will, as a matter of fact, perpetuate criminality in the office of president moving forward. I think it's important that we discuss these matters, and I'm here to deal with this subject with you. So let me go back to the word immunity itself. What does immunity mean? Immunity, as a matter of fact, is a scientific word. It's not necessarily anything else. It's a scientific and medical word. Immunity is used to describe an individual's immunity against infection uh, of certain diseases. Today we are talking about COVID-19 and the vaccination and boosting the immunity so that we are resistant to some extent uh, to COVID-19. Once you have that immunity, it means that COVID-19 virus cannot get to you uh, as easily because you are shielded against that. But tonight, we discuss immunity not from the scientific point of view, not from the medical point of view, but we discuss immunity from a legal point of view. What does that mean? It means dealing with a presidential immunity means that the president in office has been given immunity against prosecution. So it is important for me to deal with this because this is really where we must draw our decision as to whether to lift it or not to lift it. A president, both in office and beyond office, enjoys immunity according to our constitution in the Republic of Zambia. And one of the reasons is that it is important for the president to concentrate on managing the affairs of the country instead of going through judicial issues which might disrupt the efforts of him running the government. You must also understand that at the presidential level, there are situations that occur in the land that need the quick decision of a head of state, especially if it borders on security. And people would, uh, uh, security to the extent of, the, of war, you know, getting started because of a situation in the country. And there are times when, I'm sorry to say this, a president will have to overlook a certain piece of legislation in order to protect the nation, in order to defend the land. And that could be later considered as a criminal offense that the president did this against the constitutional provision. Because of that reason, bordering on the security of the nation, presidents are given this immunity so that they have a free hand to act. It is not given to them to, uh, you know, to get themselves involved in petty criminality of thieving, stealing, and hooliganism. That's not what the immunity is for. Immunity is actually in the interest of the security of the nation and also to ensure that the president focuses on what is important. So I think it is important that I explain that it's the only way that we're going to appreciate some of the things that I'm going to say tonight. But Zambia has a history with this presidential immunity. Zambia has had seven presidents since independence. And all presidents before President Edgar Chagwalungu 
have been prosecuted or faced prosecution except those who escaped it because they were saved by death. President Kenneth Kaunda himself faced prosecution. He was jailed uh, on Christmas Day and kept in, in, um, in jail for quite a long time. President Frederick Chigluba was prosecuted. First, the law and the courts of law, the immunity was removed. President Rupia Banda was also prosecuted and faced prosecution. Eventually, he was acquitted, like in the case of the other presidents. Following the, the three presidents that faced, uh, faced the loss of immunity, we have those who died, President Levy Patrick Manawasa, and President Michael Chilufiasata. These two, in my opinion, from the way the trend has been going over this matter, suggests that death saved them from this horrendous tradition of persecuting those that have been presidents in our country. But before I go anywhere, I need for us to give our position and my personal position on this matter because I need to do it right from the front so that we do understand that when I'm talking about this issue, this is where I stand. But these are the facts on the ground. And therefore, our counsel to the nation is the fact that what is important for us is not to satisfy the pain that either Neva Smumba or President Haka Indeichilema or President anybody else, the pain they faced at the hands of those that were there before them. We have to go beyond personal pain and go to the national bigger picture of what is truly in the interest of the nation. I mean, all of us have reasons to get angry, especially myself, especially President Haka Yinde. We have laid We have laid ourselves on the very cold floors of these prisons of this country. I remember one time lying flat on my face, you know, struggling at uh, Mwembeshi Prison as I was incarcerated for going to Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation. It's painful, but that's a personal journey. It's a personal price I pay. That when it comes to making decisions, I'm not just going to use my personal suffering to make a decision that is going to impact on the destiny of the nation. I would rather suffer loss but make the decision that honors our country and its future. So our position is that I've always, always, opposed the demonization of former heads of states, our former presidents. I fought for KK, and Zambians have that on record. I fought for FJT, Zambians have that on record. I fought for President Rupia Banda against the lifting of the immunity, and I am on record for that. As I had argued, all three were acqui acquitted after having spent taxpayers' money to prosecute them. All of them were acqu uh, uh, acquitted. As long as the removal of the immunity was to serve selfish interests or personal political agenda, I was opposed to it, and I am opposed to it today as well. I'm opposed to anything that is done in order to satisfy personal ego because that's how you destroy the nation. So that's why I've been against this. I do remember that when President Kaunda, who faced two challenges, the first challenge is that he was stripped naked for prosecution. And the Zambians remember that. After he lost power, he faced prosecution where he was falsely accused of stealing, stealing something like four to five billion dollars. They searched everywhere and they never found it. The second thing was that President Kenneth Kaunda was prosecuted and, or not really prosecuted, was actually um, sidelined by ensuring that a law was made that stopped him from standing for president in 1996 because the MMD at that time did not want him to stand. I fought for both these positions. There was a committee of priests and pastors that was put together. I was a very young pastor at that time, and I thank God that they considered me as a young Pentecostal pastor to be amongst heavy Catholic leaders, CCZ, 
uh, leaders that came, seven of us, I still remember some of them. A Bishop Mumba, he's late now, may so rest in peace. And um, another uh, Catholic uh, leader uh, who was there at State House. Well, we pleaded with President uh, Chiluva not to take President Kaunda to court or to jail, but to move on and ensure that, you know, we do not start to set a precedent. Unfortunately, we did not succeed as the church. I was right in the middle of it. I used to drive from Kidra to State House to have these meetings with President Chiluba. We did our very best, and it took uh, President Nyerere to come from Tanzania to come and get President Kenneth Kaunda out of uh, prison in Kabul. But that's history. The point I'm trying to make is that he was subjected to that humiliation. He was subjected to that demonization. And that's what I've been against. I've been against that. I'm against it today. We come to President Frederick Chiluba himself. Now the whole issue came upon him as well. He had to face it. Although he was the one who sowed that seed, like I had said in one of, the, one of the meetings when we met, I said, Mr. President, you reap what you saw. Make sure that we do what we are doing in the interest of the nation. Not partisan, not political, no personal needs. He was implicated and his immunity was removed. We have the history of what happened to President Chiluwa and how President Levi Mwanawasa went and uh, made a, a, a prima facie case in Parliament and the immunity was removed. We remember that. We remember concerning President Rupia Banda that his immunity was removed at that time. But remember when with President Chiluba, I was there with him during that time. I was there fighting in the trenches with him. At that particular time, I became vice president. And I remember approaching President Levi Mwanawasa because my office was open um, to receive views uh, because we had a program like that. And I went to President Levi Mwanawasa and I said, is there anything we can do to resolve this matter outside this court process in order to preserve the image of the presidency? President Levi was open to this. I remember what he told me in that office. He said, well, never you go and talk to President Chiluba yourself um, and tell him that if he can retain 75% of what he has taken from the Zambian people, we we'll discontinue this matter and ensure that we find a way legally in which to let him go free. Obviously, I knew that was going to be a very difficult message to take to President Chiluba, but I did. We drove from State House and went straight to his residence, and I said to President Chiluba, this is the offer from the president, that we need to move away from the cameras and from the courts and preserve the dignity of the office of president. President Chiluba said to me, Pastor Mumba, I have stolen nothing. I have no 75% to return. And I am happy to proceed going to court in, on, in order to earn my dignity and the fact that I am not a thief. If you and President Levy remove me from the courts, I will always be considered a criminal in the minds of people. Let the courts find me guilty. If they find me guilty, then it's okay for the Zambians to consider me a person who has offended them and stolen from them. A very, very sober answer, which is one side of this issue that many people do not understand, that immunity removed sometimes works in your favor because in the eyes of many people, you may not be considered a thief because the courts have said you are not a thief. President Chiluba has gone down in the grave. Some people who didn't like him might continue calling him a thief, but he's a justified man, gone to bed, gone to sleep, died as a man who had been exonerated from that situation because the immunity was removed. But we still feel that the precedence that we are setting is not in the interest of the nation. So I, I felt that I needed to say that President Rupia Banda's immunity was removed and I had just taken over the movement for multi-party democracy. I made it a point that every time he appeared in court, most of the time I was there, 
members of our leadership were encouraged to be there to support him and to make a statement that this is not the right way to go. And here we are, he was acquitted and we had spent money, taxpayers' money, in order to have him prosecuted. So I thought that I needed to give that history, that the history of Zambia on immunity is that almost every president has been subjected to it up to ECL, and those who missed it were saved by death. The question is, is this a tradition that we want to keep? But I think that it is important for me to make myself extremely clear. I've given our position that it is really not in me to say that prosecution of former presidents is the right way to go. I think that I find that to be very problematic. I think that it would be better, like I've been promising for years, given an opportunity to lead this country, I would discontinue with that tradition and find a way in which to move forward so that it's no longer a witch hunt after every administration. That has been my message. I have never changed it and I will not change it now. Because I think and I believe that the witch hunting that happens in Zambian politics takes away at least three years from the five years that some president is given. Instead of that new president concentrating on delivering on behalf of the Zambian people and ensuring that the questions for which he was elected are answered, Zambian people are shortchanged because the years are spent on fighting these political battles, trying to prove who is right, who is more powerful, who can vin be vindictive, and who can revenge, and who can win, and who can remain on top. And Zambians don't care about that. They want things to be done for them. I thought it was important for me to put that there. But it is also important to look at the case of ECL separately. What does it mean? What are the Zambians saying about President Edgar Chawalungu? The fate of President Lungu is now under debate. The question is, should this tradition continue or time to, discontin or, or time to discontinue with this tradition has come? On one hand, the removal of immunity sends a message to future presidents not to be involved in any criminal activities. The moment you remove the immunity of a president, it sends a future message to future presidents that if you are implicated in illegalities and criminality, do not think the presidency will protect you from prosecution. A very good moral message that I think needs to always be sent. But I think we need to wait against the other side. On the other hand, it is assumed that it diminishes, the removal of the, uh, of the immunity diminishes our prospects for unity and the security of our nation and also the respect for the presidency of the Republic of Zambia. So let's weigh the legality against security of the nation. The removal of immunity from a former president usually heightens the political tensions in the nation and threatens national security. So before we remove the immunity, we must read the mood in the country to find out whether the legal side weighed against the security of the nation is balanced and the atmosphere is conducive for that to be done. Now, the reason I'm giving all that background is in preparation for what I'm going to say towards the end of this program. The example that I want to give, I have never passed the Ziale test, I've never gone there to become uh, a qualified uh, lawyer or judge, but I do understand, have had, having had so many cases in court ever since I joined politics, I do understand that there are public interest cases that judges have to be extremely careful about. Before they pass judgment, they have to look at how does this public interest case, how does it impact on the security of the nation? Is the nation going to go into chaos if this judgment goes this way? Or should we preserve the peace and the security of the nation against some legal position that we feel must be pushed forward? 
Now, I'm not a judge, but judges live amongst us. They are our brothers and our sisters. They are our uncles. They are our parents. They are our cousins. They go to the same shops we go to. They go to the same um, uh, uh, institutions we go to to get service from government. They experience the same things we experience. They hear the same things. So if there is a potential of disintegration of peace and security in the nation, the judges will be very slow to give such a judgment that will plunge the nation into disorder and into some insecurity direction. And it is the same thing here. To remove the immunity, what are the challenges and the, what are the difficulties in terms of security of removing that? Against the fact that some other president might, might later on say, my friend stole, they did nothing to him, so I'll steal as well. This is the balance that needs to take place. And that's why I think I'm going where I'm going with this. I personally would like to submit on behalf of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy and on my own behalf, we believe that in order to solve this problem of the, whether the immunity should be removed or not removed should border on three powers. The partnership in these three powers, the incumbent president, the former president, and the people of Zambia. These three must come into partnership to resolve this, this thing that has been with us since independence, since Kenneth Kaunda left office, of punishing the previous president by the new president. It sometimes even doesn't look like it's a proper legal matter even if it's been done on a moral ground, Zambians believe that it's a way of getting back at those that were there before us. But I want to make a few statements. The, form, the President of the Republic of Zambia has a role to play according to our Constitution. But there is a word in the Scriptures, and I, since Zambia is a Christian nation, I think it is important for us to feel comfortable to look at the Bible when we're trying to solve national matters. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 19, there's a story of a man by the name of Zacchaeus who was a public servant and in fact responsible for the collection of taxes. And he was considered a thief. He stole from people and he stole taxpayers' money. But when Jesus faced him, the Bible says, and Zacchaeus in verse 8 stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. Now, obviously, Zacchaeus had stolen taxpayers' money, but when he came face to face with morality and truth in the person of Jesus, and recognize what he had done to offend not necessarily Jesus, but to offend the poor of his land and the poor in his country. The Bible tells us before anybody asked him, he himself said, I'm willing to give back what I have taken. And I think this is where we are, that the former presidents in our country can really help the healing process and the abandonment of this issue of removal of immunity from every president. If they were able to take the stance of Zacchaeus, before anybody puts up his hand to say, listen, if I've taken anything by false pretense or by not knowing, I am ready to bring it back into the coffers of the nation so that the nation can benefit and that I make right where I made wrong. I think that's the message I'm saying. Even to President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu, you are not God. You are a human being. You make mistakes. It is possible that you could have made certain decisions that are not in the interest of the country. And some resources were channeled probably to you. I have no evidence. I have no truth on that issue. But in case there is anything like that, like, just like Jesus didn't know what uh, Zacchaeus had done. Zacchaeus himself brought up these matters. So President Edgar Lunga Lugu can also say, listen, yes, there was this thing that happened and makes a call to President uh, Hakainde and say there's this situation and I would like to talk about it. 
but I do not want the nation to be shortchanged. It's called restitution. It's called restitution. That's exactly what this uh, Faith Musonda young lady did. Found with 65 million in her apartment. And I'm sure what she said was, listen, here is the money. I, I don't want to have anything to do. And probably explain to them where the money came from. And that she does not want to have anything to do with it. And that is why there's no prosecution being leveled against her. Because this is part of law. It, it happens if you can come clean. You can help the process and save the ta taxpayers' money. And I'm saying this because we are at a place where we need to redefine our future as a country. Some of these behaviors that we have carried over the years, let's stop them so that we can start afresh, so that we can give a clean, detailed, and clear Zambia into the hands of our children and their children. Let's not bring the old to continue to interfere with the prospects of a better tomorrow. This is tr probably in the hands of President Edgar Chagwalu. He would help the new president, he would help the people of Zambia, and he would help the judicial system by coming clean on some of these things that probably that he has, uh, you know, illegally or wrongly. And I think that it's a big ask, but it's an ask of responsibility that would help us to move forward. Now, I want to talk about the other issue here because President, the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia, as it stands today, in Article, in article 98, uh, Clause 4 and 5, it tells us a president has immunity for as long as he's in office and even when he leaves office. But it also gives provision that in uh, Clause number 5 that if a prima facie case is found against that president or former president, then the process of removing the immunity could be initiated. And it's not all wrong for that to happen. It's just that we have, we have really exaggerated the removal of immunity. But I won't go there because I've already explained that. But the current constitution actually restricts the removal of the immunity only to a specific charge and a specific case that has been raised. Not a wholesome accusation where everybody else rises up now that you have no immunity, you did this to my mother, you did this to my father. That doesn't work in the new constitution. If there is a case for which the uh, immunity has been removed, it will be specifically for that case that he will be uh, tried. And if acquitted, the new constitution doesn't even have a process in, of, of restoring the immunity the immunity is restored automatically without any process. So it's just a question of a president clearing himself to say, listen, um, this is my position. And the president under the new constitution, whose immunity is about to be removed, can actually clear himself at the level of parliament even before they go to court, because he has an opportunity to go and present himself before the select committee of parliament with that prima facie case against him. He could actually make his case, and that he may not even have his thing removed. The point I'm trying to make is that we find ourselves with the decision that we have to make concerning President Ed Galoon. Here is what I want to say as I go towards closing. I have worked with the current president, President Hakainde Chilema, for 10 years in the opposition. We have interacted several times. In 2016, we worked together on the campaign across this country. During those moments, we had time in which we talked about our dreams and aspirations for this country. One thing I learned about him is that once he holds, takes hold of something and he really believes that's the right thing, he will sing about it everywhere we go. Every rally, he will talk about it. Until I said to him, listen, why don't you change your message sometimes? But he keeps with it. And I want to remind President Lungu that President Haka Inde made a statement when he was elected. He said, I will not do to President Lungu what he did to me. President Haka Inde has repeated that statement over and over again. And those of us that have rubbed shoulders with him on a longer period of time know that once he says something and believes it, he tries to sustain that thing. And this issue is basically showing us he has really no intentions to proceed on this path of trying to prosecute this president. But we need support as a country from the former president. 
and all these people that are being sent to say that he, we have uh, information that he, they want to remove the immunity and all that, I think those are hallucinations and illusions of fear because of probably what has been done before. The truth of the matter is that this president made it very clear to say that I will not do to President Lungu what he did to me, prosecuting me as a matter of showing political prowess. That's what you're saying. So I think that President Lungu has an ally in State House that he can work with and cooperate with the Zambian people. Three groups are involved in this. It is clear that this President Haka uh, Chlema, his interest from what I am observing is not the removal of this uh, immunity. But the Zambian people, when you go on the ground, they, a lot of them want it removed. And how do we deal with that? The unfortunate thing is that President Hakainde, Zambia is not a monarchy. It's a democracy. In other words, the powers of President Hakainde as incumbent president end at the point when the people's power rise to say, we want this done. At that point, President Hakainde, whether he wants to lift it or not lift it, will have to deal with what the Zambian people are demanding because they elected him to do specific things for them. They didn't elect him to perpetuate his own views of how he wants, you know, this individual to be handled, that individual to be handled. The Zambian people would like to have a say, and that is why they elect us in government. So that is the challenge that stands before us as a nation. We have the incumbent with power to proceed and push this agenda, but he has also got power not want to, uh, to continue in this case. I doubt it. We'll have to see what happens in future, but I doubt it that he wants to push this line. But there are Zambians who are eager that this thing happens. The only one to change the equation is, Pastor, is President Edgar Chagua Lungu. He cannot be arrogant. He cannot be unrepentant. He cannot, you know, try to use a language that will infuriate the Zambians more. He has to show remorse. He has to say, my fellow Zambians, I had the privilege of leading you as president. But during that time, I could have done ABCD. I have asked my lawyers and all my friends that have worked with me to make sure that if there's any area of where we disadvantage the Zambian people financially, economically, or did something that was criminal in nature, with or without my knowing, we want to make sure we come clean. And that which needs to be taken back must be taken back. When President Lungu does, he does that. He helps the process of healing this nation. Because like Faith Musonda, it becomes easier to deal with this matter. But I am afraid that if President Lungu continues to remain stubborn in these matters, without wanting to get involved in finding a common solution to bring this country beyond this issue of removal of immunities, I, immunity from presidents, I think we are headed for a similar situation as what happened to previous presidents having their immunity removed. But the answer and the power is in President Edgar Lungu's hands. He must participate in making life easy to ensure that for a change we stop this thing once and for all of removing immunity from presidents. But this will not happen. If President Lungu does not show any kind of remorse or partnership and support to ensure that this thing happens. I have given our position that would rather we bring this thing to an end and respect the office of president. I have given the position of the sitting president whom I've interacted with in the past before that once he makes that statement on such a major undertaking, I believe Although I cannot quote him, that he will remain true to the fact that this immunity is not his priority in removing. But, like I said, he doesn't have all power. Power is in the hands of the Zambians. And they could overrun him and demand that immunity uh, be removed. And it's the right of the Zambians to do whatever they want. But President Edgar Chagwalungu is the only one who can help us at this time by cooperating and coming clean like Zacchaeus did. At that time, 
Jesus simply said, at this time, in this day, salvation has come to your house. And you are forgiven from what you have done. Our submission is to ask for the support of all Zambians to make sure that we find a way to bring this to an end. Unfortunately, if President Lungu does not support the process to ensure that this thing is done once and for all, his immunity threatens to be removed. It's in his hands to cooperate and to ensure that if there's anything he has taken from the Zambian people, before any process begins, it will be in the interest of our nation and his own interest to ensure that he brings it to the table like Fet Musonda has done, like Zacchaeus did in the Bible. And I know that Zambians would like to move forward and deal with the most pressing issues of our country based on bread and butter. I thank you. And those of you that have got questions, please ask those questions now. So answering the question, should the immunity for President Lungu be removed? The answer is in the hands of President Lungu. Come clean and you make things easier for all those that are involved so that the next set of presidents do not have to go through what all these other presidents have gone through. We need to move on as a country and begin afresh. Zambia can do more and Zambia can go further if we can deal with this matter once and for all. The burden is on the shoulder of President Edgar Chagwelu. Fellow countrymen, may God bless our republic, may God bless this country, and may God bless each one of you as we consider a country that we can all be proud of. I thank you, and may God bless you. Do, are we going to interact with, uh, I see some of the questions that are being asked here. Um, sorry for that quietness. I just wanted to make sure my team was. Um, um, the best was to talk about pending fuel and electricity hikes. Sir. Immunity removal is not what will help the poor. That's wrong, uh, Tony Thompson. These are matters of state that if today, for instance, we mishandle anything of this magnitude it can disturb the very unity and the peace that we need in this country somebody and all of us has to be concerned about these matters because they are before us um, and so I, I think that I don't agree with you when you say that let's just talk about fuel that's really be escaping from dealing with the facts that are before us Zambia will move faster and forward if we can deal with the issues as they arise. There is, um, thank you, sir, for your wise and timely counsel from Cosmos. Thank you. Goka, MJ Goka. Uh, 
party president, what party president? I don't know what you mean. Uh, Kaluba Anderson. And what are the offenses? Oh man, it's going very fast. Uh, if uh, President Haka in the decides to forgive Edgar Lungu, let him do that as an individual. Otherwise, if Zambia demands justice, uh, HH must not stand in the And this is the point that I'm making. I'm saying that President, Lungu, President Haka in the Chilema is not leading a monarchy. He is in a democracy. It, he may feel sorry for President Lungu, but the Zambian people are the ones who are going to uh, decide this matter. Because if they are offended, and President HH stands in the way of the Zambian people. He starts to offend the Zambian people. Then he is offending those who placed him in office. So I think that the point I've put here today is that if there's going to be any consideration uh, in this regard, the three groups must work together. The incumbent, the former president, and the people of Zambia. There must be a way in which all these three find a place of consensus in order to exempt our country from unnecessary problems. This one says, um, thank you, uh, Dr. Mumba. You have given a very objective and balanced counsel on this presidential immunity debate. Thank you so much. And it's not over. People can continue to debate. I'm only an opposition leader giving our piece of advice to the country, uh, to the president, and also to President Lungu. They can either take it or leave it. Those of you that are of you know, do not believe that what I've said makes sense. You also can make your own position. Um, uh, Dr. Mumba, uh, Dr. Mumba Twaumfa. Uh, but now, Twaumfa. Uh, okay, where are we? I need to hear that, that, that thing that you said. It's an important question. Let me go back to it. Dr. Mumba Twaumfa, but you also have the power now to tell President Lungu how it's supposed to be. Can't say much, but following, I'm a Zambian. Okay, thank you. Well, I've already told President Lungu what to do in this pro program, and uh, if the president accepts my, uh, uh, you know, an opportunity to meet, I'll be there and I can uh, do it. And Dega Puyo, ECL immunity must be removed. Um, then we have let the courts prove that. Uh, someone says, no, you are wrong, man of God. Uh, ECL is innocent, so no need to remove the... So somebody answers on, on your behalf, let the courts decide that. If President Lungu says he's innocent, then that gives the reason why we need to have that removed so that he can present himself before court and get his innocence uh, given to him. Simon E. Dakar, Dr. Mas Bumba, uh, are you insinuating that the current government has no grounds for which they can have President Lungu's immunity removed? I strongly feel that if evidence that President Lungu breached the Constitution is there, there's no need to there's no need to to rush him on her. handle himself today. Hand, hand himself today. What would be the state use? in terms of evidence to prosecute him. I don't, I don't think that uh, you, your question is very clear. But uh, I think it's, it's important for us to know that this is not the first time we are facing the issue of immunity and removal. We had it removed from President Chiluba. It went to court, and his innocence was established. The, that's really the process. Uh, President Lungu may choose what President Chiluba chose, and Chiluba was given an opportunity to have this case discontinued in court. But he said, no, I want to go to court. I want my innocence. I want to die knowing that I never stole from the Zambian people in the manner that I've been accused. And he truly did. He braved himself to go to court using the provision now of Article 98, uh, subsection uh, uh, 5, to say, if you have found a prima facie case against me, take me to court and let me exonerate myself. And that's what he did. So I think it's important for us not to make a big deal out of this. If there is a case against President Lungu, I can assure you that the, 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 the law itself will find a way in which to ask that question. The reason I've given this counsel is to balance the issue of removal of the immunity 
and the keeping of the immunity. The positives and the negatives of this. The positives and the negatives of this. In relationship to the unity and security of the country. But where there is criminality, I believe that President Lungu will have to do something in order to clear himself either before the immunity is removed or through the courts of law once the immunity has been removed. That's where the law is. It's not vindictiveness if the law starts to ask a former president, but sometimes we use it as a political tool, and I pray and hope that that's not where we are. But as long as there's a, pre, uh, a prima facie case, I think that President Lungu needs to do himself a favor by addressing himself to that matter. I think we have uh, a number of questions here, but um, uh, we don't want what happened to Zuma uh, to happen here. We may end up having a South African situation. Um, uh, that's true. And then somebody, Abdu Kunda says, Chiluba case, wasted Mwanawasa's time and money. Um, and there are people that believe that uh, we cannot have a debate except to insult. But obviously it depends on your morality and desire to see the healing of the nation. Um, now, in conclusion, there is this question about looters and those who have stolen money from government. There are so many of them, and please keep doing that. I'll go back there to try to see whether I can answer them uh, as we go. Anyone that has stolen from the Zambian people must be prosecuted as quickly as possible. And here I've left the immunity issue. Now I'm talking about the matters of corruption. And I know that any delay in dealing with this matter will remove this energy that the Zambians have created for justice. Zambians are so hungry to ensure that justice is done to those that have stolen uh, from the Zambian people. I have handled the case of President Edgar Lung alone because there's a specific presidential immunity clause in the Constitution and we had to deal with it on its own. But I'm now talking about those below him that do not have that immunity. We call on all the agencies that the delay in your departments to provide and to dig the evidence and bring these people to court and have them charged and placed in where they belong. We are running out of time. Once this energy from the Zambian people of the desire and hunger for justice disappears, they will put that in their pockets like the UPND has failed uh, to deal with one of the reasons they were voted for. So to my colleagues in the UPND, I urge you to make this as a matter of priority. Because the longer it takes, the more these people that have stolen from Zambians are going to corrupt the new ministers, the new officers, to make sure that none of them gets prosecuted. It will be such a shame after Zambia has lost so much money through blatant corruption that not one or two are taken to task, prosecuted, and found guilty. I think that it's, it will be very, very unfortunate because then this thing will continue to happen administration after administration. Time has come when we can bring this thing to a halt and deal with corruption once and for all. Like I said before, so far, a lot of these criminals have been handled with, the kids, with kids' gloves. Time has come to commit them where they belong. Any delay continues to make them buy time and buy officers and buy ministers, making this fight against corruption extremely complicated. We call on our colleagues, the UPND, to swing into action and do all that you must do to ensure that the resources and the finances of the Zambian people are brought back into the coffers of our country. So. Everything that goes up comes down. Uh, like I've said, uh, there are so many, so many, so many questions and so many contributions. And once again, thank you so much. I know that some of you wanted me to just say, remove his immunity or keep it. It's not as simple as that. I think I needed to give a background 
and then let Zambians appreciate what is at play and then place the burden on the shoulders of those that need to make this decision to make it and make it fast. Governance is about speed to ensure that when there's danger, we move quickly to avert that danger. The issue of President Edgar Lungu is something that needs to be resolved and resolved quickly. The issue of corruption in this country must be dealt with thoroughly, viciously, and without mercy so that our country can become corrupt-free and the respect to this country should come back. Thank you very much. God bless you once again. We thank God that you had the opportunity to join me. Tomorrow, I'll be dealing with the fuel, cost, and electricity. It's an extremely important issue because it's not just the increment that is of concern. It's, it's the repercussion for the next three years on this country and also in our households. And then tomorrow, I'll deal with that. But today, we rest this case and leave it on the shoulders of President Lungu to do what he's supposed to do in order to make this thing a practical route to take for us. Thank you very much, and God bless you.